I am Donna Young, as most of you know, and I have put this particular presentation together specifically for the event supervisors for the Astronomy 2019 competition year. It is also useful for state directors or any organizers of invitationals or regionals or state competitions or um, anybody involved in any of the astronomy competitions because it is going to talk about logistics, um, rooms uh, that are probably easier for the astronomy event to take place in, as well as the type of test to develop it and how it should be developed, the resources that are available, and as we go along, I will be discussing the JS9, uh, which of course a lot of people are curious about and have a lot of questions about as they see the event description as it is written for 2019. So I would like to settle any questions or difficulties that state's uh, event uh, directors or event supervisors might be having pertaining to specifically JS9. So, as you know, um, the space science events, astronomy and solar system slash reach for the stars is supported uh, by the NASA Astrophysics Division Universe of Learning STEM Outreach Program through the Chandra X-ray Observatory mission and myself as a partner for National Science Olympiad. So the resources have been developed specifically for the astronomy and the middle school space science event for National Science Olympiad competitions. And a lot of the resources and materials are located on the Chandra website under education. I will uh, tell you exactly which ones are located there. Some of the resources are located on the National Science Olympiad website instead. And I will explain to you which things are that you can access from there. Okay, the astronomy event for 2018 is a little, uh, 2019, excuse me, is a little bit different. Um, the, some of you may have seen that the webinars have been posted for 2019 and the Astronomy uh, 1 is Stellar Evolution and uh, Starburst and Normal Galaxies. The webinars uh, that have been posted, Andrea Lynn uh, was um, responsible for the astronomy webinar this year. Uh, Andrea is a Science Olympiad alumni from Pennsylvania. She just graduated from the University of Michigan and with a degree in astrophysics and is now has uh, is part of the um, graduate program at Penn State um, and I do believe her topic of expertise is going to be dealing with exoplanets. So she is hopefully the now present and future voice for the astronomy webinars. I have also, um, we'll talk a little bit later about a webinar that has been posted on the Chandra website that deals specifically with stellar evolution for Science Olympiad teams and coaches. So the astronomy event description for 2019 says that students will be, will be uh, knowledgeable about stellar evolution in normal and starburst galaxies and get starburst and normal galaxies are, are different. We always have stellar evolution and something as our topic of focus for astronomy, and that also matches the Next Generation Science Standards and GSS. Um, so um, the difference though is that, as you see in, in red at the end of the slide, it says as part of the description, that um, no internet access is allowed. However, teams may be accessing a dedicated NASA database. So, as you know, in astronomy, uh, students are allowed to bring, um, each student, each team of two, are allowed to bring two laptops or two three-ring binders or one of each. 
whatever their preference is. Uh, obviously, um, it, it also says a programmable calculator is allowed. There's been a little bit of confusion about the new description of what kinds of calculators are permitted in events, and that arose because of uh, an attempt to have a common terminology across all events, but that does not is not easily done because all of the events are so very different. Um, that precludes using a having a laptop because it has a built-in calculator. However, you are allowed to bring a laptop to the astronomy event. So, um, no, I don't think anybody is going to use a calculator in their computer anyway, since they're allowed to bring a standalone programmable calculator of their own. Uh, and as you know, there is no internet access allowed across the board for um, Science Olympiad events. However, we are going to be accessing it, but it will not be for 2019, but we're pretty sure that we're going to be ready by 2020, and I'm going to discuss that a little further on in this presentation so you'll understand. But for 2019 for this competition year, we're going to do exactly what we did for this year's competition, the 2018 comp competition, and we're going to be using screenshots from JS9. So the competition as written is no different than it has been for all these years. Um, the information is it has not changed at all. The very first paragraph here, which talks about the kinds of information uh, might include like the HR diagram and uh, stellar magnitudes, animations, JS9, uh, distance equations, stellar magnitudes, all of those characteristics that, that deal with stars in general. That does not change ever from year to year. Uh, part A, set, it talks about stellar evolution, including, and there are a few things in there are, that are different because this year we are concentrating on normal and starburst galaxies. This, you will, in, in, if any of you are a little threatened by the galaxies, so are we. Uh, it's kind of a brave thing to do because galaxies uh, can get difficult, but we are going to try very hard and maintain our normal level of questions in dealing with galaxies. Um, so the, the things that are different on here are things like um, ultra-luminous X-ray sources, because you find those in, in galaxies in particular locations, uh, and um, we have gravitational waves on there, uh, and just galaxies in general. And B, where you're talking about the different kinds of mathematical relationships that are related to distance and farther out into the universe. The one that's different there is that orbital motions include orbital motions of clusters of galaxies. And after Hubble's law, we, haven't, we have added, and we've had this on once before. We did galaxies once many, many years ago. Uh, Tully, the Tully-Fisher relationship to calculate distances uh, using spiral galaxies. So there's very little indifference there. And then we have the deep sky objects for which everybody knows that they have to be very, very familiar with these deep sky objects and how they relate to the stellar evolution content listed above. We are going to have, because Galaxies is, um, has more of a content change, uh, more content that is um, not related to Pat, the last year's content. Stellar evolution is still in, in there, but the Galaxies has not been in there for a really long time. So next, we are also going to repeat this exact same event description for 2020. We're going to do it two years in a row. Uh, the only things that will change will be, of course, the deep sky objects. Everything else will be the same. So um, there are the, the um, guide, the manual contains the event description, 
It is available if you are an event supervisor, you get it from your state director or the tournament director. Um, they are um, different every single year, so make sure you have the year 2019. It will say it at the bottom of the page. You can also download these now digitally directly from the National Science Olympiad website, as well as uh, get the hard copy manuals. You can do it either way. So make sure you know the event parameters for the event that you're doing. In, astron in astronomy, they can bring a three ring binder or a laptop and a programmable calculator. That's every single person that competes can bring that. Um, if you have any questions about the event, um, the event uh, supervisors or directors, we are, we are not allowed to answer questions, so please do not send them to us directly. Go to the uh, website where it says Rules Clarification on the National Science Olympiad website, and that is where you ask your question. because. We're, we can't answer the question because we might give a different answer to a different person and that would not be fair to everybody. So if you have it posted on there, maybe somebody else has that same question and then if they go there and look, they'll see that their question has been asked and answered already and then they won't have to ask the question again. So if you are confused about something, probably other people have been too. So it will be already posted up there. So when, they, when you ask that question, uh, the people at Nationals who are in charge of the event clarification, they will send all of the um, event supervisors the question. So I will get the question, Tad Kamasek will get the question, Connor Todd will get the qu question because they are my national co-event supervisors and we will all answer and then nationals will collate and ask us if this is the tell us what they are going to answer and is that okay with us and then it will be posted. So everybody has the exact same information. So I've already said that for rotation that this particular 2019 event will be repeated in 2020. It will still be normal and starburst galaxies, just the DSOs will change. And these tests are written, uh, pencil and paper test, um, but they also include image sheets and graphs and charts. So there we have a, a long event because there's a lot of, of, of graphs and charts and the and the and images that that have to be used when they're answering the questions so that requires quite a bit of room if you have one team of two they've each got a laptop or a three ring binder and the test is multiple pages which they'll be tearing apart using all those different image sets so they need to have enough space so they can spread out and be comfortable so you have you really need a room that has tables, enough table space, a lecture hall that has, you know, a lot of space so that the teams can, can spread everything out. If they have, since they have laptops, there should be uh, plugins available. Some lecture halls have plugins built in so everybody can plug in. Not everybody might need to. But you know, uh, in the stress of a, of a competition, they might not have their laptops totally charged. They might be nervous about that. We want everybody to be as comfortable as possible. So it would be well for you to make sure that there are at least some plugins in the room. Uh, I do not know how everybody um, arranges their competitions. At nationals, it's it's always 10 teams per session, so that's 10 out 10 uh, outlets per per set per per session that should be available if possible, or at least enough so that those teams that feel the need to plug in can have the opportunity to do that. Some of them probably might not need it. If you do not have a space that has plug any plugins whatsoever, please uh, let the teams know that prior, well prior to the event, so they can make sure everything's all charged up. Um, 
you should have two or three helpers because there are other there are things that need to be done. You have to make sure that they are supposed to be competing in that time frame. Most people use a, a wristband, so you have to make sure that they have those that the, that the correct team is in the correct session at the correct time. Um, and you have the materials need to be passed out or distributed beforehand and collected at the end. Um, so somebody needs to be able to do that. Um, it's good to be in the room that you're going to be using to run the event at least an hour beforehand to get make sure everything's ready, everything's in place. If you have can find uh, assistants or proctors who are knowledgeable about astronomy, that's great. Uh, that's always really helpful. And I'll talk about going over the the exact test here. I think on this next slide. Um, you have to know how many teams are coming, of course, so that you can uh, write uh, enough tests for everybody to have a test. Every team of two needs a complete set of all the materials. Um, and not only that, but make sure that um, uh, tell we there there is not anything that can possibly go wrong that has not gone wrong uh, at national competition. So I know all the things that can go wrong. So um, make sure, try to make sure that every test is complete. It's not any miss missing pages. Um, that's, and always bring five or six extra exams. All of your proctors, if any of them are going to help with scoring, you should sit down uh, well in advance of the test with everybody who's going to score. You should go through the questions and the answers. Make sure that everybody understands what the only acceptable answers are. At nationals, if there's other acceptable answers, we write them in, we put them in parentheses after the answer we're actually looking for. If we have a numerical question that requires a uh, computation, we always have write down the exact range from between this number and this number that it has to fall within for that to be called correct. If we're going to call, if there are two answers for one question and they get one right and one wrong, that's going to be a half. Um, partial credit. Always go through, make sure your score is, anybody that's going to score that test goes through every single one of those answers and understands what is going to be right and what's going to be wrong and what's going to be partial. And then you should always have the same person correct the same set of answers for the every single team in that competition. Uh, we have had competitions before where uh, local assistants have come in to help, but they're only there for half a day. Well, then they cannot help correct, help correct, because it's unfair to teams to have two separate people correcting, because what I might call correct on a test, somebody else might call incorrect. And then you have an inconsistency in scoring. And we have to do everything we can to ensure that everybody gets the exact same set of, of parameters for, for correcting so because as, as you well know, I'm sure, when you get to those top teams that are going to win at any competition, including nationals, sometimes it's only a half or a quarter of a point between first or second or third place. So we're really careful about who is correcting the test. At Nationals, we're starting to bring in, because we have a lot of alumni now helping, we're bringing in alumni who have written some of the questions for that test so they can see what it's like on the other side of the Great Divide. It's e kind of easy to sit there and write what you think is a great question, but then when you go and you read it over with other, other Science Olympiad alumni at Nationals just before the test, then it's like, oh, is this, is this the correct answer? Uh, is there another correct answer beside this one? So we really put a lot of effort into ensuring that the questions are, are correctly written and that the answers are correct. Um, and hopefully we've taken care of any typos, because trust me, the very first group in will find every typo that you have. So uh, uh, also you have to make sure that those then, that they're easy to correct. Uh, they need to be short answer, uh, so you can quickly go down through them. Um, make sure that, but 
even though some of them are going to be two and three step problems, they're going to be difficult, they're going to take time, but still you have an easy answer to correct and you're not asking for some kind of a description that takes two or three sentences. And as you know, they have to be corrected in time to be have the store the scores tabulated in time for the awards ceremony whenever that happens to be you do not want to hang the entire competition up because you're late with your scoring so uh, again the question should be objective there are also all those images and charts and graphs that are going to be used uh, for the competitions you should integrate the the deep sky objects with those graphs with those graphics with those image images of of the deep sky objects integrate them all together uh into a at, at so that you are asking questions that that are um get, getting an idea of the knowledge about the process of stellar evolution as you go along um and then make in the numbering even if you number at, at nationals we number the questions with actual numbers and but we use letters on the images and the graphics so there's no confusing numbers and letters at what you're looking at so if you are um, if you have an invitational with a lot of teams that normally go to nationals this is what they're used to uh, this is what they expect so it, it a lot of invitationals and state competitions use that same lettering numbering system it just makes it easier for the kids as they're moving further and further towards the uh, hopefully working towards and making nationals for national competition and i want to tell you that there is on the national science olympiad website as it was brought to my attention by adam rubenstein one of my um, science olympiad alumni that that helps write questions and run events um, that there is on the NSO website a manual, a logistics manual, and it has every single event in it, and it talks about the logistics for every event. And in the astronomy event, it talks about um, uh, PowerPoint slideshows, uh, making sure that um, that the equipment all works if you're running a PowerPoint slideshow. I, I do not know exactly where, where that came from. I know that several years ago that was tried a little bit uh, as a possible way to do this test. Uh, trust me, does not work. Um, that is, you, you cannot um, you cannot control the time that students spend on different questions in this event because some some are quick, some take a longer time. Um, the way we work the test for nationals. At not only just nationals for all of the tests we write, and we'll get into that a little bit in a minute, um, we, they, they tear it apart. Some kid is working on, 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 on the Section A questions because that's their expertise and they spend all their time doing that. Another person who absolutely loves the mathematics is going right for the mathematical questions. So you, you cannot force every team to have the same amount of time for every single question. Some aren't gonna have enough and some are gonna have too much. And then both team members are subjected to the same question at the same time and they can't tear it up. Uh, we have usually around 80 questions, 65 maybe to 80 questions overall. And you have 50 minutes for two people. They need to be able to split that up and both work for those 50 minutes uh, so that they ha can have a chance to get um, show what they do know and answer as many questions as they possibly can for the event. So, no, slide slides aren't going to work or powerpoints are not going to work <laughs>